I got a story I bet you'd never heard. A Mexican, an American, and a French guy all meet up in the back 38.6, not 40. And you'll never guess what happens next. Come on, join me. Hey folks, Lester here. Uh, I'm at the Plum Grove property and what you can see behind me over there is a very large bulldozer type machine. Uh, it's a bulldozer type machine. The front end on it is a little bit different. That right there, my friend, is a land clearer. That is made to clear land, especially digging up roots from large trees and pushing them over. And that's exactly what we're gonna have happen today here at the um, the Plum Grove property. Now you're saying, Lester, your property's already so clear. I, what are you doing? Oh, there's a lot to tell you that you don't know. Uh, I have talked to the supporters about this already, so they know, but I wanna bring it to you as well. Um, they're paying for it, we're doing it. And, uh, but I want you all to be, to, to know what's happening and why it's happening and how it's going to affect the long term of the Plum Grove property here. Well, and the animals obviously that live here. So you guys join us, all right? You'll have to excuse all of the noise. <laughs> I am surrounded by a family of turkeys. And yes, there's 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 Mr. Al, there's Alfred. He's come out to join us and see what's going on. No one knows why there's a tractor parked in Cornholio's turkey pasture. This is the pasture that he's claimed for himself. You already know that. He thinks he and his family deserve a pasture. They've never had their own place. And why in the hell is there a tractor parked here? So my friends, what we've done is we have hired a company to come out and clear all of that land you see behind me. Now they're gonna leave all of our big pretty trees and they're gonna take down all of the small stuff. I am going to actually drive back on the side by side and show you the plan. And then I'm gonna also fly the drone over all in this video and to explain to you what's happened as far as land transaction. Uh, I did purchase some additional property from Joanne, uh, that's Aunt Joanne. Now, this here is the original five acres that you've always known as I'm a Survivor Sanctuary. It includes the pond there in the front, alongside the church. There's all of our house and barns there in the center. And then, of course, that pasture out back has always been what we've called our land, which is, in fact, my dad's land. But it is what we've always considered to be I'm a Survivor Sanctuary. So what we've done is went by and purchased some property behind our land and it extends all the way along my dad's fence line all the way down to the river and uh, it when it, when enclosed it is about 11 acres so that brings the plum grove property to a total of 17 acres which is plenty of land to maintain the animals that are here now and even enough land for, you know, Ellie and Megan to continue the work that we started here in bringing in new rescues. So, this is Mr. Leo. <laughs> He's going get his glasses on. Are you in hiding from something? He wants to put on disguise. <laughs> and it's his company who's doing the work for us. And you guys have also know, met his wife. She's Daniela, who works at the Taqueria, where I eat all the time. You know I eat there at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, sometimes three days a week. So yeah, we have uh, known this guy for a while and it's his company who's doing all the work for us. Everyone is very curious. No one knows what's about to go on here. That's a big machine. All right, look out you guys. Y'all might have to move, 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 move. Everyone get needs to move. I'm trying to hold the gates. Oh my gosh, they have no idea what this monster is. Y'all need to move, go, go. They're trying to stand strong. Look at the size of this monster. <laughs> they don't know. Uh, Mr. Leo here, the owner of the company, and I believe this fellow's name is Uriel. I'm not sure, that's, that's his nephew. Uh, they don't know what Tex would have gone head to head with that thing. 
Tex would have gone head to head with that and, and never backed down. All right, so what I was able to purchase from Aunt Joanne is an additional 11 acres, but I'm gonna go from this post and we're going straight back to the river. So everything on this side of the property still belongs to Aunt Joanne. Uh, over here though is what I purchased. Now I want you to take a peek and just, you can still see old rubble and trash from Hurricane Harvey destruction, just all kinds of mess there. So it's really, it's really dirty and nasty back here. And that's, this is not good grazing pasture. So we're gonna pretty much go through here and clean it all up. It'll be everything from the road over is what we're working on. But uh, like I said, I've asked Mr. Leo and his team to leave my big trees and only take down the small stuff, the things that prevent grass from growing. So while we're waiting, uh, I would like to talk about something that I think is very powerful. The man driving that tractor is in a wheelchair. He was injured in an automobile accident years ago and has learned that it's not going to end his career or his business. All right, so we've come back to the woods several hours later. I can't get my drone up today. I'm having a couple of small issues, but we're gonna drive down and see what's happening with everything. These guys have been working their tails off since early. I see they have lit a fire at some point. Nice. Wow, looks like a total different area. Look at all that. It won't be long before the ground here will start drying out. And once it's dried out, you'll be able to see a whole lot better. Oh, it looks pretty muddy right there. So I've come down and I'm talking to Leo and, and his help here. And I want to share his story real fast. I want to let him share his story. I asked permission first. He said yes. So let me get a little bit closer and let you guys meet and talk to Mr. Leo. All right. So you said that you had an accident in 1991 and it was a vehicle accident, yeah, a, car accident. a car accident, and it was a spinal injury. Spinal injury. And so since then, you've, you've lost almost all use of your legs. Yeah, I don't move with my foot. And this one barely did. Okay. And so... I'm intrigued. So you're able to find your way off the tractor into a wheelchair and from the wheelchair back to the tractor. Yes, so, and you said I can video that later because I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I just can't, I'm just can't imagine how hard that must be. It's not hard, but I mean, sometimes when you, when you want to do something, you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people on this page who feel the exact same way. They have overcome something big in their life, a major obstacle, sometimes medical reasons, sometimes it's mental health, depression. Sometimes they've lost a child. Uh, they've lost a partner. They've lost parents. Uh, lots of uh, financial struggles. They find themselves very, very desperate for, you know, financially. And so a lot of people on the page are going to be intrigued, just like I am with your story. And so... You said that you're able to not only use the tractor, but since 1991, he's, he's, he, you've gotten married, you have a company, you, you maintain employees, and you do phenomenal work. Yeah. And you're able to do all of that even though you find yourself. So, you know, there, there's a new word. They don't say handicapped. You know the new word that they're using? Yeah. Handicable. Yeah. Is handicapable. Yeah, you got it. You understand that? So, yeah. capable is capacity. I said I'll go for that. So, capable is you're able to do something. So, it's not handicapped where you're capped off, you're closed, you're done. You're handicapable. Yes, and so, that's what I think that you are the definition of handicapable right there. And I, I thank you for sharing your story. And I want to talk more to you about it before this job is done. But you're doing a wonderful job. So, thank you so very much. Hold on. I'm laughing because I'm sitting here talking to Mr. Leo about my Hurricane Harvey experience. And all of a sudden, he's like, oh, you ought to hear mine. So tell me this story again. You're at your house, yeah. and the water's rising. Yeah, that was rising. I, was, I heard a like, little boat, you know, and the guys passing by say, hey, let's go. They're gonna, no, I'm going to stay here, man. Stay Why here. did you not leave? You were scared of well, people. I was scared of people to steal, steal your thing. stuff, okay. Yeah, steal and, and so, so I'll stay there, <laughs> and as soon as, man, that was about seven, eight o'clock in the night, I said, man, we have to get off. I mean, we have to leave. How high was the water? 
man. <gasps> but the window to the, my trailer. Uh huh. Seven, eight foot. Yes. Still. Were you able to rebuild your trailer, or did you have to get rid of no, it? No, they don't. It, they got rid of it. Yeah, same as mine. Yeah, that happened to me too. Okay, so the story the story gets better. The story gets better. Okay, we're going to get off of Leo's story for a minute, and we're going to jump on this guy's story. Now, listen, he is from France. He doesn't speak Spanish. He doesn't speak English. And I'm like, how in the world do y'all communicate? Because he speaks Arabic, and he speaks French. And so Leo has an app on his phone. <laughs> this is crazy, man. This is... So he's putting an... He has... A, he has an app on his phone. <laughs> and they communicate using the app on the phone. Okay, that's impressive. So it takes your language and translates it to my language. And that's how y'all communicate. That's awesome. That's awesome. And you're Uriel? Uriel? Okay. ¿Y de dónde eres? De Nuevo León. ¿De dónde? Nuevo León. So Mexico. Nuevo León, Mexico. Okay, okay. ¿Y cuánto tiempo tienes aquí? Dale a Un, un año, un año y medio. So he's been here for an, a year and a half living in the United States then. Okay. ¿Y cómo le gusta? ¿Extraña tu familia? Un poquito. Es mi familia. Oh, es su familia. Okay. So this is the, your tío for that. Tengo mi esposa y una niña. Oh, so parece muy joven. ¿Cuántos años tienes? 25. So he's 25 years old. I thought he was 18. Yeah. I thought you were like 16, 17, 18 years old. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you, man. He's wife and kids, y'all. And they're all here. So that's good. He doesn't miss family back home. I sure thought he was younger than that. But uh, listen, this is the end of this video. We're going to get the drone going up later, maybe tomorrow's video. And uh, I want to thank y'all for watching. And listen, you guys remember stories like this and, and the power to overcome. You got folks who live from different parts of the world who speak different languages, who all come together and, and complete goals and tasks like this over here. And then you got a fella who's had some difficulties in life, who continues to push on and never give up. And if that is not everything that exemplifies I'm a survivor sanctuary, then I don't know what is. All right. So the last thing I want to say about this particular project is that our plans are to do this kind of fencing, which will be great for goats and cows, uh, even pigs. And what we'll do is tie all of this together with the front uh, the littles pasture. And so once we get all this done, we will have goats, donkeys, alpaca, longhorns, pigs, everybody can enjoy all 17 acres and uh, they can all run together and do their thing. And uh, that will, that really is gonna be the best thing for the sanctuary long-term. That will give the goats the foraging the grazing that they need. It will give all of our animals access to tons of pond, uh, fresh water around the barn. And so we're super excited. It's been a long time in the making. And I just really think that uh, this is gonna give Ellie and Megan a wonderful kickstart into continuing the sanctuary type work, offering a forever home to abused, abandoned and neglected animals. And so, hey, bridge building we're building a bridge even though jamie and i may not walk that bridge very often ellie and megan and a lot of animals will and that right there is such a blessing so thank you all for those who support us on this endeavor and those who've been with us from the get-go and allowing us to continue god's work it's a good feeling Don't let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. <laughs> yeah, something like that.